Motorola's Edge S, a proper flagship killer. Now my unit's still in the mail, but thanks to Sahel, I've managed to get a hands-on with this phone. In today's video, let's check out the box contents. No, 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 no. I said I'll do fewer unboxings and not no unboxings. And this one is interesting. It's a Snapdragon 870 at 22,000 rupees. It's, it's being seen as the next Poco F1, a perfect flagship killer. So today, let's see what the Edge S has to offer. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech. And if you do end up liking what you see here, thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. So this here is the Edge S's box. This is a 6 gig RAM, 128 gig storage option. Opening up the box, we are greeted by the Edge S itself. We have a gradient back here, and it does indeed look nice. Then there are a bunch of booklets along with the IMEI stickers, which are followed by a 20 watt charger. Finally, there's a USB Type-C cable. So that's it, a pretty simple unboxing experience. Now, like I said, the thing that makes the HS unique is the chip inside. It's the Snapdragon 870. Yes, it's not a triple eight, but at 22,000 rupees, you can't really ask for better, right? And the 870, it's, it's an improvement on the 865 plus. It has boosted clock speeds and as reflected in the scores, it's a pretty, pretty solid performer. Now it's not just the numbers. The Edge S has a ton of flagship features. First, the 90 Hertz display. Combined with that overclocked Adreno chip inside, the performance is just buttery smooth. The display itself though, it is not AMOLED, so there is a corner cut, but I mean, doesn't this feel very Poco F1-ish? You know, it's got all the necessities, none of the frills. In fact, uh, I mean, the Edge S actually improves upon the Poco with that, I mean, in regards to that, uh, because the experience here, the in-hand feel, it's better. This has a glass back. So from a looks perspective, it's not gonna blow top flagships away. It's no stealthy matte black finish, but it still manages to look quite pretty especially that blue to purple hue. It's catchy, it's a head turner. Now, I did get sidetracked a little bit from the specs. So coming back, the storage is UFS 3.1. So Aplon speeds up pretty quick. On top of that, Motorola also provides a hybrid solution. So if you wanna further expand memory, use micro SD, you're welcome to. While we're here, let's also take a, take a look around the device. Along with you know this hybrid tray, we also get a customized extra key that Moto calls my key. This is awesome. This is exactly what we've been asking manufacturers for. A totally customizable key that lets you launch any freaking app you want. To the top, there's just a secondary noise cancelling mic, the power and volume keys they reside to the right. And note that this power key has a fingerprint scanner built in because it's a LCD panel, right? It's not AMOLED. Uh, but this scanner is pretty responsive, very quick in fact. Now, Motos also offer an extra feature. If you double tap this fingerprint scanner, you get to bring up some shortcuts. So it's quite a, quite a nifty option to have. Now to the bottom, you have the speaker, primary microphone and USB Type-C port. This is a single speaker. The earpiece does not double as a speaker here. Now the software, it's pretty close to stock. It's Android 11 and Motorola has left most things untinkered with. Combine, combine that with the UFS 3.1 storage and Snapdragon 870, the phone feels very responsive. The performance is flagship grade. Uh, not just with the interface, not just with user experience, even with intense tasks like say gaming, the gameplay experience here was excellent. By the way, the display resolution is full HD plus, and like with some Sony phones, the aspect ratio is 21 by nine. Uh, so this 6.7 inch IPS LCD panel has a very respectable 400 plus pixels per inch pixel density. Now, if you notice closely, you can see that we have two punch holes to the top left, and these house two proper cameras. No depth crap. We have a 16 megapixel primary, an eight megapixel ultra wide, as you can see, the selfies turned out to be pretty decent. Not best in class, but good enough. Do know that there is a little bit of a variance in colors between both sensors, which I generally am not a fan of. As for selfie video, it is pretty detailed. Motorola has absolutely nailed skin tones. While we're talking cameras, let's quickly swap to the back. And here we have a quad camera setup. The primary is a 64 megapixel sensor from Omnivision that's paired with a f1.7 lens. No optical stabilization though. Now the pictures, they turned out rich and detailed. The highlight of the sensor though, as good as the pictures are, it's video. We get 6K video at up to 30 FPS and I'm really happy to see Moto market this as 6K instead of like what Xiaomi did, uh, call it 8K after upscaling it. That left a sour taste in the mouth. So hey, this is cool. 
Of course, uh, we do not get stability at 6K. For that, you're gonna have to drop down to 4K 60. I also like how we can swap between sensors right while shooting. And you can even shoot with both cameras simultaneously. This is something we've seen with other brands, but hey, it's there in this phone. Barring these, there are a couple of other video options too. Spot color is where you get to select one color and the rest is monochromed. Uh, that's available, works reasonably well. Of course, it works much better with stills, as you can see in this image or in this one. Portrait video is also an option. It is very bad for objects, as you guys can see here. But with people, it should be better. But I was on my on my own shooting, so I really couldn't, you know, shoot myself with the rear camera for portraits and actually see it did not turn out well. And I had very limited time with this phone, so sorry about that. In my full review, I'll definitely talk about this a lot more. Now, the secondary sensor is a 16 megapixel ultra wide. The field of view is 121 degrees. Well, not quite as detailed as the primary. It's still pretty commendable. There's a bit of a difference in colors again. We then have two sensors, just making up the numbers. The first is de for depth deduction. And the next is a TOF sensor, which helps with depth deduction. I don't know what Moto was thinking here. Well, there is no dedicated macro sensor. The ultra wide, it does double for macros. Uh, and I think it's quite nice, better than a lot of dedicated macros we've seen. So no complaints there. On the software front, we get a truckload of options. I like how you can swipe to access the most commonly tinker around with settings. Now, returning back to the belt, glass to the front and back makes this phone feel a lot more premium than it has any business uh, being, given its price tag. The weight though is about 215 grams, so a little bit on the higher side of things, but Moto has managed to evenly distribute it, so it doesn't feel very hefty. And the camera, the, there is a camera bump, but it's not very elevated, so it's, it's, it's okay. The phone doesn't wobble when you put it on a desk or something. It does, but not enough to actually be a problem. Now, the 21 by 9 aspect ratio also helps because this means the phone is narrower than other phones with similar size displays. So you can technically use it one handed, at least that's how I, I did in the video, but hey, that's because I was shooting with one hand and holding it with the other. But you know, more, more often than not, you're gonna have to use two, two hands. It's 215 grams, you know, it's difficult to use single handed, but because it's narrower than other, other phones, it's okay, it's a little better. Now other specs includes blast resistance, the presence of NFC, Bluetooth 5.1, uh, the bat, oh yeah, the battery capacity, I almost missed that, 5,000 milliamp hour, which does go a long way in justifying that 215 gram weight. Of course, the 20 watt charger included in the box is a nice touch too. Now while these are all nice touches, it would be for not if Moto priced themselves out of the picture. And they've done that in the past, hello Razer. Now, here's where Lenovo has literally killed it. In China, this phone retails for 19.99 yuan. That's about 22,000 rupees or 310 US dollars. For that price, it's an absolute steal. My sources say it's almost confirmed that Lenovo Moto will be launching this in India. And if they can keep the price, I mean, not even at 22, even if they can price it under 30K, you know, the GST increase, import duties, customs, whatever. Uh, if they can keep the price below 30,000 rupees, I think this is gonna be the phone to beat with regards to value for money. So anyway, that's the Motorola Moto Edge S. Uh, it seems to be the Poco F1 spiritual successor. What do you guys think about it? I will be getting uh, my hands on my own unit soon. And once I spend enough time with it, I will most definitely be back with a full review. So do stay tuned for that. By the way, do let me know what you think about this phone. Is this one you can see yourself getting? Uh, leave a comment down below and with that, we get to the end of this video. It is time for me to bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye bye.